This is a review video of concentration inequalities, and by this we're looking at how random variables are centered around their mean, or their expectation. And the two that we'll be focusing on today are Markov and Chebyshev, and I've heard many pronunciations of that, but that's the one I'm going to go with. And, and I've also seen many different transliterations of, of the spelling, for the spelling, but that's what I'm going to go with. There are many other kinds, such as Azuma's inequality, but I promised myself after my dissertation that I would never speak of it again, so I'm not going to. So now we're going to get to Markov's and Chebyshev's inequality. But before we start, I wanted to give a warning. I don't know how many math videos actually have warnings, but this one does. Please use these concentration inequalities judiciously. And by that, I mean don't go using them willy-nilly like they're some kind of Swiss army knife. They're not. They're useful when you only know certain information about a distribution such as the mean and the variance, but if you know more information about the distribution of a random variable, please use it because you will get better bounds for the probabilities. That warning be having been said, let's start. So first we'll discuss what the inequalities are, and then we'll work through a few examples, and I'll give a quick proof that's actually a generalization of both. Oh, by the way, this is, a, this is an aside that mathematicians or history buffs might like, but Chebyshev was the advisor of Markov, doctoral advisor of Markov, and his inequality was first. So, aside, people may not care, it's not important, but anyway. So here's Markov's inequality. So now we have a random, non-negative random variable x, and it has finite expectation, and that's very important that you check that, because I've seen cases of things going horribly wrong when people don't check that. And if we have a constant greater than zero, the probability that the random variable x is greater than c is bounded above by the mean divided by the constant c. Similarly, for Chebyshev's inequality, we have a, a random variable, in this case it doesn't have to be non-negative, with finite mean and finite variance, then the, for all constants k greater than zero, the probability that x deviates from the mean greater by greater than k is bounded by the variance divided by k squared. Sometimes you will see this inequality given in terms of the standard devi deviation, and that's that little sigma I drew here, and that's the square root of the variance. And in that case, it's the probability is bounded by 1 divided by k squared. So now we're going to do a few examples of applying these inequalities and then we will actually do the proof. So let's start. So this is pretty standard, straightforward applications that we're going to do first. So let x be the number of pounds of blueberries produced per week. from Torhune Orchards, and that's, that's a lovely orchard in um, Princeton, New Jersey. It's very nice, actually. And the blueberries are really good. Not important asides, but asides. Anyway, so we're told that the expectation of x is 20. So they're only expected to have 20 pounds of blueberries a week, and that's probably why they're so expensive. But anyway, so we have 20 pounds expected. So now our first question is, what is the probability that we have greater than 15 pounds. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 15 is just going to be the ex uh, expectation, which are given as 20, divided by 15. Okay, so that's 4 thirds, and this is not so helpful. And the reason why this is not so helpful is that we know probabilities have to be at most 1, and this is greater than 1. So we've done nothing wrong, but it's just showing you that Markov's isn't always the tool that we want to use. So now, rather, what if this question was, we want to know if they produce greater than 50 pounds of blueberries this week. So here, our constant is now 50. And when we divide 20 by 50, we get that it is at most two fifths, the probability that they'll produce more than 50 pounds in a week. So now we're told, that the variance is very big. It is 10 pounds a week. And now we want to know what's the likelihood 
that we produce between 10 and 30 pounds at Terhune Orchards. Okay, so in order to do this, um, we're actually going to look at the complement and then figure out the probability of this. So we're going to use Chebyshev's inequality to figure out the probability that we do greater than that. So the probability that x minus its mean, which is 20, is greater than 10. And then we just apply Chebyshev's inequality. So we take the variance, which is 10, and we divide it by k, which is also 10, 10 squared. So we know that this probability is at most 1 10. So that is greater than 10, uh, 30 pounds or less than 10 pounds. And now we want to take the complement of this. So this implies that the probability that x minus 20, the absolute value of x minus 20 is less than 10, is greater than 9 10. So 1 minus the 10, which is just 9 10. So highly likely that we will produce between 10 and 30 pounds of blueberries a week. So now we are going to do another example. And in this example, we are actually going to review calculating variance because we didn't review the definition yet. So we are going to be talking about balls and bins. Once again, balls and bins. 